Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. I'm at the University of Ottawa, Laboratory for Paleoclimatology, and also at Carleton University, Department of Geography and Environmental Studies. I'm going to discuss the largest living structure on the planet, the Great Barrier Reef. 1,400 miles curves along the northeastern coast of Australia. Unfortunately, this structure is now the world's largest dying structure on the planet, and I'll explain why. So, just today, this is my Facebook page. I'm sitting here. This is an interesting story. You can still see some snow there. This was in the spring melt um, a number of years ago. There was a lot of ice on this side. You can see some of it at the bottom there. So I actually saw this guy with a uh, professional camera, you know, large telephotos, etc. And uh, he was just standing taking pictures of ducks and stuff. And I said, you know, why take pictures of ducks? How about I wade over to the chair and you can take some pictures of me? And he said, sure, you know, just ask people. You know, you never know, they might say yes. So anyway, he took a bunch of pictures. This is one of the best ones. Um, so, you know, it's what I use basically for, this is my uh, Facebook page. Um, I also have a Facebook uh, group, which I've set up and I wanna try to get activated. If somebody can tell me, if I can just switch this page over to a group or something and keep the friends I'm sure there's a way of doing that because I'm always pushing up against that 5,000 limit. I like to get this message of a climate change emergency out there to the public and also some of the solutions. I propose them as a three-legged bar stool. Slashing fossil fuel emissions, cooling the uh, planet, specifically the Arctic, to keep the warming go from going out of control there, and removing CO2 from the atmosphere, CDR. But today I'm talking about these coral reefs. So horrible for ecosystems, horrible loss of coral reefs, two-thirds damage in unprecedented bleaching in 2017, which follows a bleaching in 2016, which was a bit worse, but this is the second worst, and that precedes bleachings in 2002 and 1998, and even in 1982-83. The significant thing about this year is we're not in an El Nino. So this is the first year there's huge bleaching um, from just the water temperature is too high. It's not an El Nino um, year. So there's a bunch of different articles, um, and I'd highly recommend that you, you know, go Google this. Kevin Hester, 10 years ago, I sailed across the Coral Sea. You know, he's a diver. He's there on the ground seeing what's happening. And he actually um, had uh, Dar Jamal, um, a, uh, a writer, um, and there to, to talk and report on the death of the coral reefs. Um, this is a very interesting article um, on the di diversity of reef e ecosystems um, by, it's, it's a E60 Yale, it's an interview of a coral reef scientist. So I'll talk about some of these things. That's my Facebook page. This is my Twitter page at Paul H. Beckwith. Just be sure to follow my tweets and I'll follow you back. And, I post lots of interesting stuff. Uh, this is the Great Barrier Reef stuff. You know, what makes a scientist take a stand? Talking about climate change can jeopardize career and reputation. But it's worth it. We have to do it. As scientists, we have to do it. I mean, the, the problem is too severe. The problem is too risky. Uh, the problem is, is science goes sort of you know, we, we need science to understand the processes, but in order to understand and do the science, we have to become specialists. And when we become specialists, we don't look at the overall picture and join the dots. You know, we get rewarded for being specialists and we, we have a jeopardized career and reputation for be, trying to join all the dots. Now to solve the problem of climate change, to understand all the pieces, we have to do this. Um, we have to join all the dots, and that's why most scientists aren't doing this. So we, the system is, is broken. Um, so this is my Twitter page, lots of stuff. It's not just uh, climate change. You know, if you want to find the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. This goes along with some of the previous videos I did where I talked about quasi, um, 
quasi-resonant amplification of jet stream waves. And I'll be doing a lot more on frequencies and resonances. So, so this is my page, lots of climate change stuff, but not exclusively climate change stuff. I also look at solutions and all kinds of other things. This is my website. Just Google paulbeckwith.net and it'll take you right here. And usually this, there's a post a couple times a week and it talks about my latest videos and uh, you know, else what some of the other things I'm doing, some of the other things I'm thinking of. You know, I do all these videos and the website. I have a very good um, friend, mentor, um, colleague, uh, ch fellow chess player, um, David Korn, who does a great job at keeping things on track and, and doing posts to the website and many other things, um, you know, sort of all kinds of different stuff. So please uh, consider donating here. Just click on this, you know, anything helps. And that keeps my videos coming, usually, you know, every couple days. Um, so let's get back to the Great Barrier Reef. Two thirds damaged in unprecedented bleaching. So in the bleaching, the polyps, the, the, zoo, the, 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 the uh, zooplankton that live in symbiotic um, nature with the coral polyps, the water gets too warm, they flee. Coral turns white because they give it the color. If the water cools down, they can come back and recover, or the ones that flee can die, and other ones from healthy coral nearby can come back. So if, for example, a, a cyclone 100 kilometers cuts through the reef and, and bleaches a lot of it, then polyps from the north side and the south side in the terms of the Great Barrier Reef can come back into the reef and repopulate. Um, so what we're seeing is, so we got 14, 1500, 1500, well, 1,400 mile long, but for a 900 mile stretch, two thirds of it, we've got bleaching this year in the middle section. So let's have a look here. This is in 2016. The most severe bleaching was in the northeast part of the reef down to Cairns, maybe a little bit past. This year, the most severe bleaching is bracketing Cairns and there's some further north, some pockets further south. The problem is, is we lost, uh, the, of the coral that bleached here, two thirds of it um, died, I believe. And these regions here where it's bleached two years in a row, it's definitely, definitely game over for that coral. This is a huge, this is a, a, a huge ecosystem. Um, and we're hammering it with, because of climate change. The water is just too warm. And um, I talk about, I have another video coming out soon on ocean currents. And I discuss how, how possibly some of the ocean current shifts, instead of bringing warmer water up north of Australia, as in the thermohaline circulation route, some of it is the warmer water is coming onto Australia, knocking out the, the reef in the upper parts. So 800 coral reefs were assessed and the damage is unprecedented. The central third is as severe as the, what we saw in the northern third last year, double whammy, no chance to recover. That's the death of the coral. Rising water temperatures, um, man-made climate change. Okay, the oceans absorb 93% of the heat going into the earth. That's been happening for a number of years. Uh, bleaching is stressing the coral. This, the significant thing is this is not an El Nino year. So the 27 bleaching is from the El Nino. Okay, so let's have a look. Um, let's go have a look at, you know, the bigger picture. So these, this, this image shows basically the location of coral reefs around the world. Okay, many of them are clumped sort of around the equator. Um, they like, you know, the, the, the warmer water in those regions has supported the corals as opposed to colder water further north, but the water north and south, you know, depending on the hemisphere, but the water is just getting too warm and we're getting these bleaching events. So this is another view. Um, this is in the Pacific Ocean. So this is a great barrier reef here. There's reefs here. There's reefs on all these islands and things. Another factor is that's this sort of longer acting is sea level rise, right? As the sea level rises, then the coral depth, of course, gets deeper and the coral is adapted for light. 
So it needs to get the light from the surface. If the water deepens many meters, say, say three meters, four meters, then the coral reef, um, that will do a number on the coral reef that is left. You know, it'll bring it to slightly cooler water, probably not that much cooler. Um, so that's another factor. This is, uh, th these are areas around the globe that have had some severe bleaching, moderate bleaching yellow, low be bleaching blue, no bleaching green. So we're not very healthy here in terms of coral reefs. You know, why, why is this so important? Okay, we need coral reefs. They protect and shelter many different fish. Without coral reefs, these fish are homeless, nowhere to live, nowhere to have their young. Okay, they're important to us. They're a food source. The fish that nest, that, that spawn on reefs and grow up on reefs and stuff, millions of people, perhaps even a billion people. They attract tourists from all over the world. What's Australia? People are gonna have to tour uh, coal mines in Australia when they can't go and see the coral reefs or they'll drive boats all around. And this is where the reefs used to be. Here, look at some pictures in our boat. Income, millions of dollars of income annually for the people living by coral reefs. Medical research, okay? Medical cures for cancer, heart disease, HIV. You know, there's huge amounts of algae and microorganisms. Some of those can have the key to solving medical disease. They protect 20% of the world's coast from erosion, okay? So they protect 109 countries' coastlines. Um, the drugs I mentioned, these are some of the ailments um, where there's a lot of work on um, coral reefs. Um, they're home to 33% of all known fish species, one-third. They're a nursery ground for over 25% of all marine species. Does this mean with the loss of the coral reefs that we lose all of these, that we lose a quarter of all the marine species, that we lose a third of all of the fish? Come on, people. I mean, this is, uh, it's not just a pretty thing to look at. This is a vital ecosystem. This is the rainforest of the ocean that we're losing on our watch, okay? Biological hotspot, huge biodiversity, huge numbers of plants and animals in these reefs, similar to the biological hotspot of the Amazon, for example. Um, they grow very slowly, about a centimeter a year, it varies depending on the type of coral. If they're destroyed, it will take thousands or tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of years for them to grow back. Okay, um, and this is kind of repeating. They protect 20% of the world's coast from wave erosion. So without the reefs uh, growing, they'll be worn down by wave action, turned pulverized into sand, and um, then erosion on coastlines will be enormous um, in, in uh, also cascading with rising sea level. Okay, um, this is a coral, typical coral environment. How, how the coral is growing, and you have the polyps growing out, and you have the zooplankton hanging out among, among them, giving the color. Uh, of course, anything that disturbs the bottom, like trawl, um, tra trampling, destructive fishing techniques, poison dynamite, anchoring, all of these things can damage reefs. 20% um, of the reefs have been effectively destroyed in the last few decades. 20% or more are severely degraded. So we're, we're, we're getting worse quickly. Okay, so this is, an up, this is an expanded view of what I just showed you. You know, coral bleaching, the zoo, the algae, the zooanthellae, leave. They're, they provide the color. It turns white. Okay, then within a couple of weeks, other algae moves in. Just green algae moves in, so it darkens the reef. So if we're flying over it, there's a very short window of a couple of weeks from when the coral, if you go too early, all of the reef hasn't bleached, you know, or, or what's gonna be bleached hasn't been bleached yet. If you go too late, the reef has turned green, you can't see it from the air. So what they do is they fly through, they time it, they fly over numerous reefs, and then they send down uh, divers to see what's going on. Um, I'm running out of time, so I'm gonna stop here and I'm gonna continue and do a part two uh, right, right now. So appreciate your, your um, watching these videos. Uh, our ecosystems are in trouble.